guys, I share coming out today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Glad to have you here with me talking some raid, opening some uh, some ancient shards. We get a lot to open today. We have two events running at the same time right now. We have a double chance for legendary champions, and we also have a 10-time targeted boost, which you all know is a big say it with me scam. <laughs> But we still have the double chance anyway. Uh, so we want to get our hands on Harmina, man. Harmina is is a monster. She is one I just mentioned on my last Void uh, Shard opening video, right? But she is one of my most wanted champions in the game right now. Her and Acrisia. She hits so hard. She has amazing passive. 50% uh, ignore defense. Or, or Excuse me. Enemy ignore defense effects are decreased by 50%. I think that's a better way to put it, right? Then she has a champions from Demon Spawn Faction cannot inflict critical hits on this champion. This champion cannot land weak hits on champions from Demon Spawn. She's going to provoke on a three turn cooldown AoE that cannot be resisted against Demon Spawn and she hits like a freaking truck. Uh, let's just take a quick, twi a quick glance at Demon Spawn and talk about how meta Demon Spawn is in the arena. It's amazing the synergy that she has. It just makes her even better. She's already incredible with that passive and those hard hits. But, you know, Magnars everywhere in the arena. Wither, the, the, uh, the crowned. Uh, Prince Kaimar. We have Duchess, obviously, everywhere. Mortu Macabre, probably the most popular arena champion right now in the game. We have Candyman. We have Inithwi. I mean, Hefrak. You know, I'm telling you, man. Demon Spawn's a great faction to have extra bonuses for but first guys and i am so excited about this one today's video i am happy to say is sponsored by goddess of victory nikkei so nikkei is a mobile sci-fi rpg third person shooter game where you are a commander you have a team of androids or nikkei as they're called and you basically have to defend you know the human race from being destroyed by the aliens so the idea here guys is as you progress in this game you'll be collecting nikkeis each with different special Special combos or skills and the idea is to put this whole team together of Nikkeis that complement each other very very well and then that will lead to further progression in the game so right now there's something really really cool going on in the game guys it is a collab between one of the top animes in the world right now with one of the top mobile games in the world that's right it is Chainsaw Man and Nike. Now as part of this event guys, you'll actually be able to play as Miss Makima and Himeno, which is really really cool. There'll also be some familiar faces as far as non-playable characters such as Denji and Aki. Again, we're talking power, Makima and Himeno all together in action guys. This game also features crossplay between PC, super immersive, amazing graphics, massive massive world to explore and to battle guys. Download using the link in the description below guys and join me and having a lot of fun playing goddess of victory nikkei we're also going to be donating a hundred dollars i'm going to go back to back here because uh, i've talked about the arc for a long time i'll be brief here guys i promise i know you know talking about charity for three minutes in the beginning of a video is not the most entertaining thing but to be real and to make it personal because it is i was a previous on the board of directors for an, an organization excuse me called the arc uh, i was here in in, in massachusetts uh and i've been working closely with the arc for the better part of 30 years now uh, they helped out people like my brother before he passed away and they help out so many individuals and families out there not just in the United States but really uh, they're, they're active in multiple countries out there providing advocacy and help to, to kind of tie in uh, families and individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities, Down syndrome, autism, etc., uh, help tie their family in or hook their family up with resources they can actually use. Because having grown up in a family like that with a brother who I was, a, I was like essentially his dad and also his brother. You know, I'm four years older than him. So growing up with someone with severe autism like that, you learn how to, you know, how, how difficult I can say it can be. And how incredible it can be too. It's the most rewarding and challenging experience that I personally gone through. I can only speak for myself, but the ARC helps out so many uh, families and individuals out there. So it's a great cause. We'll uh, again, $100 per legendary. We'll go ahead and make the, the uh, I'll make sure I include the screenshots and slack in a little bit towards the end of the video or at the end of the video. So we get a Ulfrig. He is the uh, the new banner lord. He looks like an uncommon, no? This poor guy looks like an uncommon champion. Too tall, too skinny, too orange. Whoever designed him. What's up with that, man? <laughs> Sounded a lot less lame in my head. 
Not that he looks bad, but he looks very plain. We get a decreased attack on the A1, we get an AoE, uh, stealing a random buff on a three turn cooldown, 100% chance, and a continuous heal on all allies. Not a bad ability here in flow of morale. And then we have committed offense, fills turn meter of all allies by 15%, and then places an increased attack on all allies for two turns on a four turn cooldown. Removes all decreased attack uh, debuffs from all allies at the start of this champion's turn. Uh, speed on battle is 15%. I don't know, guys. I don't know about you, but I would give him maybe like a C plus grade. Not bad, but not great. That A2 is really solid, you know? Uh, all right, here we go. A bunch of blues. Next. Going to make this video a little bit quicker today. Not going to talk about every champion, but we will give some commentary, of course, like we always do here. If you pulled during this event, let me know who you got. Let me know. And if it's if it's Harmina and I don't get her, don't put that. You can just keep that to yourself, okay? Anax, I got so lucky. I pulled a uh, not a not a six star uh, soul, but I think a four or a five on Anax. I want to do a video on him. He's got decreased defense. He hits very hard too. He's got decreased accuracy. He's got poison and he's got weaken. Uh, big version, right? So very good against clan boss has a decreased defense and, a de and an increased attack Excuse me when his HP dro drops below increased defense. Sorry uh, 75% uh, So I really want to I'm itching to try anax in uh, in clan boss So let me know if you want that video and I'll make it happen for you guys. All right We got a whopping 1% chance. Let's go ahead. Give me all that legendary gold guys. Let's do it. Let's do it All right, we get Ina we get the new shadowkin uh, rare Man, I didn't go for the fusion. Did any of you guys go for the uh, for the fusion? At the time of this recording here, I still have like a day left, but yeah. I'm gonna need about 15, how, how many do I? Okay. I'm gonna need a lot. <laughs> anyway guys, let me make some room, I'll be right back. All right guys, here we go, let's do lightning round. Let's do it, let's do it. Here we go, here we go, here we go, boom! All right, so we get Ripper, nah. We get a uh, Hoskarul though, what a beast of a champion, right? He's got the increased resistance, weak version, but you know, he's got it. There's not that many champions that have increased resistance in the game. And then we got the stun, we got a removing stun, increased defense. Uh, and then we have the stun with the turn meter on the three turn cooldown on the A2. Very cool champion. All right, next up is going to be, here we go, lightning round, round two. Give me the legendary go. Ursi and Ice Crusher. And then we have Blood Lord. Meh, two, well, two average champions, right? I do like Ursi and I do like the Black Bear a little bit. He helped me in Faction Wars, you know? So I have a song. Oh, here we go, here we go! Harmina! Come to Papa Harmina! Come to Papa, so cringe. Harmina, there she is in all her glory. I've got her, ladies and gentlemen, and I can't wait to use her. I can't wait to bring the thunder, bring the Harmina Havoc to the arena. Welcome to the squad, Harmina. All right, so guys, what has she got? We already know the decrease attack on the A1, the decrease attack on all other enemies for two turns. If the attack is critical, you love to see it. A three-time hitter. Each hit decreases target's defense by 5%, stacks up to 30%. Each hit also increases this champion's defense by five, stacks up to 100%. Instantly activates Celestial Awe skill if you kill an enemy. What is Celestial Awe? It's a three-turn cooldown we get a provoke for one turn and again it can't be blocked or resisted if the target champion is from the demon force faction we already talked about her passive as well she's mine 10 times for once in my life is not a scam if i'm gonna keep pulling a little bit why not we get venom mage uh let's see crazier things have happened my second most wanted champion is calvalax so you know We'll see if we can get him too. Why not be greedy for a little bit, right? We get another Urson. You know, he's begging for me to give him a little spotlight. So we'll give you a little bit of time in this spotlight here, Urson I Ironhide. I call him Ice Crusher. That's his brother. My bad. Uh, we get turn uh, increasing the cooldown of one of the target skills for one turn at random. Not a bad A1, 50% chance. We got a two-time hit, whatever, here uh, on the A2. It's a what? Each each hit has a 5% uh, turn meter? <sighs> Man, they're gonna buff that up a little bit. An AoE decreased attack, which is really handy, but it is on a four turn cooldown. But this is this is pretty solid. Each hit has a 50, make it a 100% chance of decreasing target's turn meter by 7.5%. Uh, each hit also has a 100% chance of putting one of the target skills on cooldown if the target is under decreased crit rate, which is a hard debuff to find out there. But his brother, the Ice Crusher does have it. Uh, let me make some room, guys. I'll be right back. Got a few more to open here. All right, guys. Here we go. Here we go. We're back. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I can't believe we actually... I'm shocked that we actually got our hands on. So we get another Ulfric, man. He's making a lot of appearance. He's becoming the new Harrier. 
and no one like him anywhere. It gives me the same hairier vibes, guys. Relic Keeper, Tashada, meh. Tashada does have like an interesting kind of rework, so I think she's worth a second glance, maybe. I don't want to be too quick to judge. But Vrask we didn't talk about earlier. I still stand by Vrask, you know? The dude who heals on every hit, providing it's critical, right? Uh, he's just a solid healer, man. He just, you know, relentless set, heals for days. That's it. Magnar! Ah, uh, that rocky, volcanic, pile of hard-hitting, HP-based stone flame. What is he? Stone and flame? Sure, why not? I'm not sure how I feel about his helmet. Am I the only one who thinks his head is maybe a little too small for his body? What is wrong with you today? But then again, I have a big head, so who am I to talk, right? We get an extra hit on Percussive Pound. It's really one of my favorite epic nuke abilities in the game, Percussive uh, Pound, right? Uh, okay, here we go, here we go. Again, nothing too crazy here. Corpse Collector in Ertract, er, er, Ertica, sorry. Her and the other bug came out the same, <laughs> the same day, didn't they? I don't know, who am I thinking of? You can help me out in the comments below. We get Executioner, we get Carlina, we got Steel Skull. Still called pretty good. Carlina pretty good too. She's got the burn on the A1. She's got an AOE decrease attack. Uh, can't be resisted by HP burn, you know, and enemies under HP burn. But this one's pretty cool. Decrease the duration of all debuffs on all allies by one turn. Then places a strength on all allies. This buff is protected. Cannot be removed or stolen. Every time an enemy under a burn gets a turn, decrease the, the duration of two random buffs on that enemy by one turn. Again, not the best epic, but not the worst either. Be right back. All right, guys, here we go, here we go, here we go. We're back. All right, let's see what we get here. Eh, Kalia. I'm still not a fan of Kalia. Still not a fan. They gave her a buff. AoE, three turn cooldown, heal reduction. Three time at random with the HP burn on a four turn cooldown. Nah, she doesn't do it for me, guys. She doesn't do it for me. Kalia. I want more buffs to Kalia. Here we go. Deke, miscreated monster. Now that's what I'm talking about. That player M is how you make a great epic champion. Deke with the extra turn, turn meter fill, the decreased defense ability, the speed in all battles, the leech on the A1. He's got it all. But miscreated monster, we talked about this. I released like an hour long video talking about the best epic supports in the game in case you missed the video. I really enjoyed that one. Uh, I guess I'm a little biased though, huh? Uh, but going over Mystery and Monsters kit, it's just like, yeah, I, I knew what he does. But when you read it, you're like, dude, he's a monster. Pun intended, I guess. The AoE with the stun and the shield, the great shield, the ally protect, the 50% the heal on himself, the continuous heal on himself for three turns, the fear on the attacker whenever they attack an ally. Dude, ooh, he's so good. He's so good. They need to make more epics like that, man. Plus, oh, get another one, another one, another one. Oh, man! <laughs> Welcome to the squad. I am an Altan hater. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you Altan fan club. Do not, do not hate me. Why not? Because I was hoping it wasn't true. He used to be a monster of a champion. I remember when I started playing this game, I wanted to get my hands on him so bad. And now he's good. He's, he's really solid. But maybe it's just that power creep a little bit. Kind of like Steel Skull. You know, I'm not hating on either of these champions. People get very upset when I hate on a champion. Something about Altan for me, though, he's just lost. He's lost a little bit. I don't love him as much as I used to. I gotta be real with you guys, right? Defense in all battles, 33%. That's great, right? Uh, revise a random ally with 30% HP when he kills somebody. Okay. Then he's got the increased defense and a shield if the attack kills an enemy. So just an increased defense on a three-turn cooldown. And then he's got the decrease attack on the A1. So, you know what? He's still a really solid clan boss champion. I'm not going to lie to you guys. But since the clan boss meta changed to decrease attack and increase defense, not being a staple of most kind of mid to end game teams because of unkillable and blocked damage, uh, co today compared to three years ago or whatever, he's just not as, you know... It's not as quintessential on a clan boss team. Like it, when I, if I first pulled him, my first copy, I was like, yes, I got the clan boss god. And now I'm just like, okay, cool, I'll turn. Anyway, that's $200. Here we go. It's Soulbound Boyer. 
big fan of Soulbound, you know? She's unbelievable. The AoE on the A1, every single one of her abilities, extra 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit. She's got the turn meter, uh, excuse me, a turn meter depletion on the A3, if I can speak. And then on the A2, we get a 75% ignored defense. It's not the craziest multipliers in the world, but still, that's a lot of ignored defense. Uh, so really, really fun champion. Really good at control, especially in that stun set. Another one! Another one. Foley! Oh, this is a special, a special, dirty, disgusting, pay-to-win whale moment, ladies and gentlemen. Quadruple hitter on his A2, quadruple hitter on his A1, and then sealed fate. Attacks all enemies, decrease the targets, uh, excuse me, decrease the turn meter by 15%, then attacks the targeted enemies, so you can like double hit Rotos. Enemies killed by this kill cannot be revived, and I love block revivals, plus this living armor passive is insane. Anytime he gets stunned, or freezed, or slept, or provoked, he's gonna instead remove that debuff, heal the champion, and boost his turn meter by 50%. Foley, welcome to the team. Here we go. Listen to this, guys. Let, let, watch. The, here we go. This is going to be so dirty, but we're going to do it right now together. Foley plus three. Fully ascended. He's my. I only have two fully ascended champions. Or do I have? Yeah, only two. Foley and Dracomorph. And here we go. There it is. Boom. Plus four. Fully ascended. Dirty whale. Foley. But I look the same. Hey, one more batch of ancient shards. I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, here we go. 50 more. Let's do this. Let's get one more. Why not? Why not? All right. Apothecary, Soulbound, two of my favorite, uh, two of my favorite rares, sorry. Uh, Skiramis, I'm a big, big fan of this dude, too. I talked about him in that support video as well, so I won't belabor the point, but he's got this great A2. It's filling his turn meter by 10% for each buff that has its duration decreased. So what it's doing on a three turn cooldown is decreasing the duration of all enemy buffs by one turn, also placing decreased attack. But this could be an easy, depending on where you're using it, you know, as long as there's enough enemies alive with buffs, you can fill his entire turn meter again. He's also got to provoke on all enemies on a three turn cooldown, 100% land rate, counter attack and continuous heal. And that leads into more turn meter stealing off the A1 or stunning. Very, very, very cool and new epic champion out there. I would recommend, I would invest in that champion. He's a very versatile champion. It's kind of like, can kind of fit one of those flex spots on your team, you know? You're not sure exactly, you know, you ever have one of those things that you're just like, okay, I got four awesome champions or three awesome champions in the arena. And then you're like, okay, I can kind of put anybody in this last spot, right? Who's going to benefit me the most? He's like one of those type of champions who's just a good add-on for me, at least. Royal Guard, uh... Ultimate Jorg, a lot of people love this dude. He's got the, the uh, turn meter boost, the increase attack, the revive two random allies, 60% HP, 40% turn meter in a perfect veil is very, very good, albeit on a five turn cooldown for a rare champion as well. And he brings some damage with the HP burn, so I can see why people love him. I have not built, personally, old Hermit Jorg, though. All right, we get Kale, we get Grizzled Jarl, who I love, Executioner, Valerie, who's worth taking the 50, in my opinion. And then we got all the starters here. Kale, Aethel, Elhain. Sorry, Galek. <laughs> but we got all three. Got three out of four is not bad, right? Galek always left out, man. Always left out. Here we go, another one! It's a hard me that times two! <laughs> Man, 10 times is not a scam today, boys and girls. Here we go, it's hard Mina! Okay, I'm not that excited about it. You know what, sometimes I get comments that are like, dude, does this guy get that excited when he's all by himself pulling shards? Number one is I don't pull shards by myself. I only record them on YouTube because why would I waste shard pulls with not making them a video, right? And number two is if I was pulling them by myself, I hope this doesn't ruin it for you guys. If, if it's gonna bother you, spoiler alert, you might wanna, you might wanna turn off the video, but I would not, I would not. I'm just doing it to, you know, to get, get, make, some con make some fun content here, right? Please don't say that. It was real. It was real to me. Allow myself to get extra amped up for these videos, uh, but I would not be, like, alone in my car being like, Harmina! Or maybe I would. Guys, thank you so much for watching. That's $400 towards the arc. Thank you, and as always, take care, guys.